After a restless night, Sunday began before dawn. It was our intention to get started early since we had 24 miles ahead of us and a five hour drive after the takeout. As we packed up and tied in our gear, we couldn't help but notice the waterlogged boats which had not yet been retrieved from the near catastrophe the night before. miles of this stretch feel calm and serene compared to the first day. While they are fewer, the obstacles are more severe. Through the second day, we encountered a bright blue natural well on the river left. Dismal River legend is that this spring is at least 200 feet deep. In the last few miles, fences are more frequent, mostly of barbed wire, some tightly strung across the river. Some were hard to see and presented an additional navigational challenge in areas where the river became wider, slower, and shallower. These fences are absolutely invisible at night, so getting an early start and getting off the river before dark is essential. The landing at the old Thedford Bridge is every bit as difficult as the launch at Mullen. We held tight to the bank on the right, and we all managed to exit gracefully, this time. Loading up at the end of a Dismal River trip, the reason the river is called Dismal becomes clear. While some would consider all the technicality of the river the cause for its name, some of us think that the reason it's called Dismal is because its beauty and uniqueness make it dismal to leave.